So let's flip a little whip up something here in the kitchen for you really quick. If you've uh, seen these in the past, every so often you know I love my crostinis. Uh, really easy to make and very crunchy. I love a good crunch when it comes to bread and food. Sometimes, depends on the type of bread, of course, and what I'm eating. So I want to run by you really quick how to make a crostini. It's super easy. So I've got a loaf of bread here. Now, I will go ahead and share this with you that this is too big of a loaf of bread, but it's all the store had. It is a French baguette. But I prefer my French baguettes to be about half the size of what you see here. If you can find that, that's great. If you can't, this will still work. But let me show you how I kind of did it to make it a little bit smaller for you for a crostini. So when you cut bread, uh, I like using a bread knife. And the reason they have knives for bread is if you use just like a regular knife, is could be as sharp as could be, it can still kind of flatten the bread because you're pushing down. But with a bread knife, you have the serrations on it. And so what I'll do with this particular one is I'm going to cut it with my bread knife. And this would be way too big for a crostini. That's more of like put a slider on that, right? So then what you can do if you only get something this big is just cut it pretty much in half. And now you've got pretty much a crostini. Uh, basically, a crostini would be about this size right here. But of course, it'd be looped at the bottom just like it is here at the top. Doesn't matter. It's still going to have the same flavor to it. It's just not the typical crostini, right? So what you can do after that, once you have your loaf of bread all cut up and you have it done, just drizzle on a little bit here of your extra virgin olive oil. You're not going to saturate this. You're just going to put a little bit of your extra virgin olive oil on top. Now, what you'll do after that is you'll put a little bit of garlic powder on top too, and that's all you have to do. If you don't have garlic powder or you have some garlic cloves like these here, you would take the garlic clove, get the paper off of of it, expose just the clove itself, cut that in half, and then you can take your crostini bread and rub just a little bit of that garlic on there to give it dark garlic flavor. Now, I'm going to give you some different options to go with this because this recipe you can do quite a bit of different things with. Uh, you can, instead of using a garlic clove, if you want to give it like a little bit of a punch with some zest, you can actually take a little bit of, a, of the skin of a lemon or an orange, uh, zest it and kind of put a little bit on there or just sprinkle on a little bit of orange juice, fresh lemon juice, something like that. Then all you do is just put it in your oven at about 400, uh, and it will really uh, kind of get firm here relatively soon, less 10 minutes, maybe even less, and then you have something like this, a very firm crostini. So now what we're going to do is kind of just quickly just put some things on top. That's really about it, but I'll give you variations that you can do with this. So what I have here is pesto sauce. I like buying my pesto sauce. I really like this brand too, by the way. I really do enjoy the classical brand. Even the pizza sauce is good. You can make your own pesto sauce if you like. Uh, fresh basil, toast some pine nuts, get some olive oil, emulsify it really good in a blender, uh, and that'll kind of give you your own pesto. But I like buying it because it's just easier to go with. Then some ricotta cheese. Ricotta cheese, I really like it. Uh, you know, it's it's not a spicy cheese. It's not a hot cheese. It's very smooth. It's very creamy. has a little bit of uh, sweetness to it, if you will. It's actually a cheese that's kind of made out of products of cheese that have already been made. And they just kind of take those and make ricotta. Some uh, goat milks in there, some cow milk things of that nature. And then some roasted red peppers. I have those in a jar too. Threw them in my toaster to kind of give them a little bit of hot uh, heat and a little bit of browning or uh, blackening to it. Um, because you see in the jar, I mean, yes, they say roasted. It, it's been roasted. It's just not really a good job, in my opinion. If you want to do your own roasted pepper, by the way, start, a, uh, start your grill up with a flame, uh, charcoal. You can actually take a whole red pepper, green pepper, orange pepper, whatever, put it right on top of the flames. Let the charcoal and stuff burn off first, if you get the briquettes especially. Let it burn off first. Take that pepper, put it right on those flames every so often. Just twist it around till it turns totally black. Take it inside, rinse it under cold water. That char comes right off and you got some really good roasted peppers. Otherwise, that's all you really have to do here. So you're going to take your ricotta cheese, which you can see here is a very smooth, but it's also a fairly creamy cheese that you're just going to put on top. Now. Just kind of drizzle on a little bit of your pesto. And if you do, by the way, make your own or even just the, the bottle of the canned version here, you're going to want to stir it because it, it does have the pesto and garlic and such in it uh, and oil. And so that will then begin to separate. Drizzle on just a little bit of your pesto here. You can actually mix these two together, by the way, and just do it that way. And then just take some red peppers of your roasted red peppers. Oh, that's a big one. We're going <laughs> to hold on that one for a second. Put it on top. And what you could do also... If you have some prosciutto, cut it up small, roll it up, and put it on top. 
That's it. Very, very simple. It is your, uh, your uh, pesto sauce here with your ricotta cheese, roasted red pepper, a little bit of garlic flavor, and a little bit of crunch. We're going to try it out with Ron coming up next.